hi, everybody. I used to be a professional moderator, <laughs> so this is pretty easy for me. Um, well, let's start at the beginning uh, with Fred Daniels, the uh, creator of, of, of the American version. Does that qualify or drive you crazy? The, no, the beginning is, uh, is early years before I came along. And uh, the actual creators of the show were Richard Gervais and Stephen Merchant from, uh, from England. So, yes. What was the development process like of the, of the show, and, and how were you brought into it? Well, they had a show. I got a tape of it from my agent and watched it and thought it was a, a really cool, brilliant show, and uh, didn't really think it, it would ever be on American television, but um, I thought it'd be a cool meeting to take uh, just to meet those guys. Um, and then it turned out that they uh, were big fans of American television in general, and um, specifically of The Simpsons, and that they had really liked an episode that I had written of The Simpsons, and we kind of got along. And uh, eventually I was uh, uh, hired to adapt their work. And then Steve, at what point did you come into the process? Because this, this show is so sort of dependent on your character. I, st I still haven't come into the process. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I auditioned like everybody else, and the auditions were very different than any other show I'd ever auditioned for. They were more of a workshop. And you never got to see, generally when you get to a point, you know, a network audition, when there, there will be a, a bunch of people from the network sort of weighing in on, on how it's going. This was very unlike that. It, it was just uh, Ken Quapis and the other actors and a camera, and he really shot the audition like a documentary. So that, that was sort of my first taste as to what it would be like. But I met with Greg and we talked briefly before I auditioned, probably a week or so before. But um, I had never seen the show. I'd only heard how great it was. And I kept my, I didn't watch it for the sole purpose that I heard it was so great and that Ricky was so fantastic that, that I, I would have an inclination to copy him if, if I watched it. And I, essentially, I would, I'd try to uh, emulate what he did. And I, I want to try to go in with as clean a slate as I could. Did you not watch the English one? I, I won't watch it until we're done with this here. Oh, you've never seen <laughs> no, any of them? No, because I know he'll be so great, it'll make me sick. So I sort of... <laughs> <laughs> well, then, as, as the cast built, uh, I mean, how, how was the cast built? Sort of in what, like, how was, you know, how were the spaces filled and sort of what kind of timing? Steve actually was the first person suggested for the role. And we said, oh, that sounds great. Um, let's uh, just hire our casting director first, and then we'll, we'll take a meeting when, as soon as she's on board. And Allison Jones was the casting director um, who cast Freaks and Geeks, and I was very interested in working with her after Freaks and Geeks, because I thought that was the best cast TV show I had seen in years and everything. So we managed to get her interested in the project. I think <laughs> the first person that we hired was BJ. And uh, BJ uh, was a great stand-up comedian, and still is, and uh, I had seen him. Uh, and thought he was uh, a great person to have. And then turned out he was also a comedy writer, so we hired him as a writer and an actor. And that started the, the uh, mini tradition of writer performers that, uh, that we had. And, I, and then, then I guess we, we uh, the next person I think was Ken Quapas, who joined the team, who um, was our director and would be great if he was here, uh, directed the pilot and many of the great first episodes. And he, I had really been interested to hire because he had started Larry Sanders. And the um, shooting style in Larry Sanders and the kind of spirit of that show I thought would be good to have somebody like that on board. Um, and then, uh, as, as uh, Steve pointed out, we did a lot of, of screen tests. With a cast like this, I mean, so much of the writing seems to be tailored to the personalities of the people. And it, all, and it seems, and I think it's one of the strengths of the show, is that everybody seems to be speaking in a voice that, even, at least to us sitting at home, seems like their own. I remember the leap that we made when we did the batch of episodes two through six were um, very different. I think the pilot was, was very strong and, and got us on the air, but after that, when the staff got together and started breaking the rest of the stories, having seen Steve Carell and Jenna and John and Rain and uh, caught glimpses of all these other people, it was easier to picture um, how, even if Steve was ignorant of, of Ricky's, uh, what was different between Ricky and what he ended up doing, we could 
picture um, Steve in the role and not Ricky. And it became much easier to write and sort of little nuances or quirks of the characters could, of the actors could become uh, quirks of the characters. I think the writer-performer thing is a big, is a big deal. And that's, that um, was something that got us into trouble often in the sense that from the writer's room, it would get severely depopulated in the middle of the season when um, you know, BJ and Mindy and Paul were all on stage. Um, and uh, so that, was, that would be tough. But, um, but I think that the, the good thing about it is, is that uh, people who, you know, there was a lot of co-mingling of the two groups. And my experience with bad TV is that often with bad TV, there's two camps, and the writers don't trust the actors, and the actors don't trust the writers. Right. Well, Paul, can you talk about that? Like, was there the difficulty of being a, a writer performer? I mean, is it, uh, were you just writing things for yourself? Like, you know, <laughs> Toby's big dance number, things like that? I've almost never written something for myself. Mindy, Mindy's kind of the, the king of Toby, I think. Um, but, oh, I thought uh, you were going to say she just writes for herself. Which is also <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was her too. I think Greg's idea to get the writer to, to break down this wall as part of his concept and uh, which were you I'm, first? Which did you consider? Writer. Yourself? I've been a writer for a long time now, and this is the first acting I've ever done. And, and it I goes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I kind of Tell showed, him, showed up. Toby's and, rules of acting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's mounted on the wall in the in the writer's room. Yeah. His rules of acting. Is it Toby's or Paul's? No, Paul's. Paul's, Paul's rules of acting. acting. Yeah. Go through them. Uh, I can't remember all of that. Come on. Come on. There's, um, I think Come on. if you have a water bottle on the table, you have to bring it underneath the table, <laughs> as if it might not be cleared. <laughs> don't, um, don't react. Don't react to anything that's going on. <laughs> don't laugh. Don't, don't laugh. Break laugh. <laughs> don't break. Don't laugh. Continuity. Uh, remember, you would have a coffee mug in one scene, and then the next That I was learning cold. slowly. That wasn't even part of it. <laughs> I was that's shocked. I was actually I shocked when Brian brought that up for the first time, like maybe middle of season three. Yeah. <laughs> like, look at the way you're sitting. I do the same thing. After about 30 episodes. You're an artiste. You can't be time. worried about that. That's someone else's job. Somebody with a clipboard or something. Hey. He'd be drinking no, that actually and falls eating bagels. I'm like going back <laughs> That might be a good time for Dave to comment. <laughs> I have no comment. <laughs> well, actually, it, it is. It is. It does bring up an interesting thing. It was such a naturalistic show with people kind of just. I, I mean, I know because uh, Kate and I have been friends for a million years. She's told me like there is a lot of computer solitaire seriously being played there. So there's a lot of people I think just living. I mean, it, does that present a lot of problems uh, for you or? There's a whole thing on the set. He, he, with the he's the editor, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Filling you guys in. Extraordinary. Oh, they got that in the intros. <laughs> um, I think Creed, Creed's character, is the only one who, he plays solitaire. You can see it on his screen. And he's, like, we're allowed to see his, everybody else, you know, they call action. They have to, you know, change their screens. But, I mean, these guys will tell you on the set, it's fully functional with instant messaging and email and, and stuff like that, online gambling, I think. Stuff. Porn. But, um, <laughs> and porn. But, uh, porn, he says. As far over as here. like, uh, but the cast doing things like, they're, they're pretty good. Matching, you know, I, I'm always looking for takes where, you know, if they do something, they have to, you know, do it again the same way so I can cross between takes. And our show has a lot of improv in it. But, I mean, I can't say enough about this cast. What you see on the air is 2130. Our, our first assembly is like 38 minutes. Mm -hmm. So these are long, long shows, but I mean, they, they do a great job. Everybody, you know, really just, just great. Rain, the character that you played, Dwight, is the, the, the your English uh, uh, analog. I, I don't know the actor's name. I've Mackenzie Crook. Mackenzie. Mackenzie, yeah. Had you ever seen him before, uh, before yes, you were um, cast in this? Un and unlike Steve, I had I watched every episode of the BBC show, and I, I tried to copy him as much because <laughs> um, he was so friggin' brilliant. Um, I just do a very bad job of imitating. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't think you. I don't think you do. Prism. <laughs> and, uh, 
So that's how we ended up with Twitter. But when you started out, was not was that not a daunting sort of task? Is that just a yeah. dumb question? Yeah. Oh, it's terrifying. He's so singular looking um, and, and odd in his own way. And it's like, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm obviously a little bit singular looking and odd in my own way. But um, I needed to find a way to make it, you know, come to life. But, yeah. Um, I really, I, you know, I've kind of joked about this in interviews and stuff before, but I really think for me, like, no, I, was an, I was a theater actor for 10 years in, in New York before I did any TV or, or film or anything like that. And, you know, uh, I really think that for me, it really started with the haircut and um, the gla picking the right glasses and um, kind of went all in the short sleeve shirt and the calculator watch and everything. Like, I kind of feel like my grandmother could play Dwight. If you know what I mean? <laughs> she had the little flip and the thing. and Like, anyone can do it. Try it. Try it. Go home. Jim and Jenna, how is it being sort of like the romantic engine of a, of a sitcom? I mean, it, it just, it would seem to have its pluses and minuses. Go. Romantic engine. Well, you know, I mean, well, it's sort of like, are they or aren't they? Tomorrow. Well, you know what I mean? Like, the, it, it's the are they or aren't they, you know, it, it, that kind of real, you know, like the promo department's dream come true. Um, I mean, what did that feel like, to have so much attention on that? And, and, and what did you end up getting out in the real world as it was going on? Um, I guess I can make a joke, but I, I can't because I'm not quick enough. But also, uh, <laughs> also because, um, you know, the truth is, I, I, I've said this a hundred times, and it's absolutely true, uh, unlike what other people have said, especially for Jenna and I, I think, um, <clears throat> it's all writers 100% all the time. I mean, these people committed to this relationship as being super dynamic in its own way and also extremely subtle in its own way. And, you know, I just remember that one episode when we were on the booze cruise and um, when I saw the episode and they had allowed that incredibly long pause when one character really wanted to say that he loved uh, Pam and then he couldn't. I just thought from then on I have full and total trust in anything they have to do because anybody who can take that big a risk and they don't write for ratings and they don't write for drama and they don't write for what anybody wants to see, they write for what's real for the character. That's extremely brave and, and um, it's just an incredibly be for us. There you go. <laughs> and there's a lot of other romances that have come out on the show, too. There's, you know, the love triangle of Angela and Dwight and Andy and, um, you know, the, the Ryan and Kelly and... Michael and Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't, I don't feel like we're like this lone engine. I think one of the neat things about the show is that they sort of investigate the, there's comedy, but then all these people are all striving for love and, um, you know, connection, and that comes out a lot. Ed? What can I do for you, Andy Richter? How was it coming into something that was already up and running like this? I'll say for my part, it was very daunting because I was already a big fan of the show and I was very anxious. I was very excited because I loved the show, but but I was very nervous because I didn't know how I would fit into this kind of vibe. And very early on, like my second episode or something, and if you recall, my my I was introduced to the show in one of Jim's sort of storylines off at the uh, Stanford branch, and. Uh, I said, I, I was sort of opening up to John somehow about my anxiety and just sort of feeling uh, like nervous about it. And, and he was like, "Come, dude, we're all here like to support you or something like. It was better than that, but yeah. Yeah, it was more. <laughs> it was way more. But still, I bet you said dude. Dude. <laughs> no, but it was something like we're a basket and you just feel like you can nestle okay. into it or something. And I was like. <laughs> he was talking about a basket? I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, but it actually, uh, it was such a nice sentiment and it was so genuine and it totally put me at ease. And, and then as I got more kind of entrenched in the show and I moved over to the Scranton office and kind of got to know more people. It was sort of 
I think it was nice to have a slow introduction too because it didn't uh, over it wasn't overwhelming for me or anyone. So uh, it was scary at first and then ultimately amazing. Angela, if I can include both you guys in this, uh, you guys characters uh, tend to be kind of insane <laughs> a little bit. Uh, do people kind of expect you to be your character out in the world? I would say sometimes people are afraid to approach me, which is just so silly to me. But I, I realize they are only seeing me as Angela Martin, and in real life I'm a little bit of a goofball. And usually then when they do come up and finally say hi, then I overshare, and it's awkward. <laughs> so, so, like, I'll be at Target, and someone's finally like, oh my gosh, it's, it's you, and it's nice to meet you. And I'm like, oh, really? How are you? Where'd you get those flip-flops? Are they on aisle 12? Because I didn't see them, and I really want them, and they have beads. What? What's going on? How? How are you? Here's my email. <laughs> and, uh, and then it's weird. <laughs> Jen. Uh, Hi. Jen Salata, who uh, is a writer on the show. Well, a producer. Yeah, but you're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there a usual genesis for the ideas for each episode? Are they based on like a, you know, like a plot point on a, on a comedy bit, or do they come from different places? <laughs> they, I guess, they can come from anywhere. I mean, it's like you can see there's like an unusual kind of quirk or something happen, you know, in real life, and then you, you know, bring that in and. Uh, um, Trying to think of an example. Any other writers <laughs> help me? Isn't that great when somebody asks you? I don't know. They, I, I honestly yeah. don't know. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I think the you know the actors inspire a lot of um, of ideas just you know through you know their characters and watching. Anybody think of something that happened on set that became a that became a a, 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 a script? Sometimes we accidentally call Greg because he's our boss as a writer. Michael, that will happen sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah. We'll do that, and it's so humiliating, and you feel terrible because what, what the connotations of. But Greg used to do this thing where he'd get hot in the writer's room, and he'd try to take off his outer layer, his fleece, and he'd do that thing where he kind of pulled off all of his layers. Right, <laughs> We'd right. see, like, his naked torso for a little bit, and we were like, oh, this is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Later, Michael and, and Pam, accidentally, when you said come in to the office, you saw his penis and fun run. So we'll take an event that is just mildly awkward sometimes, <laughs> and we'll exaggerate oh, yeah. it to something that's like truly horrifying. I mean, that's right, sort right. of my favorite <laughs> example of that. I, you know what? I'd like to recreate that scene for you too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian, tell me what it was like to start out as as one of the supporting characters, and as time went on, obviously taking more of the, the plot load. I mean, how it's that... It's funny, I always thought of myself as the lead. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I had seen all of the episodes of the British version and um, it was so in love with it and actually had, um, had just, I, I, like Rain, again, had been doing theater for about, about 10 years and had just moved to Los Angeles about three months before the office started. And um, I knew the British version, and I heard that NBC was going to do it, and I decided that that was the show that I was going to be on. Um, and it, it's, uh, I, Greg and I scary and talked, weird, frankly. It's really weird. Um, Greg and I have talked about this, uh, but not for a long, long time, but I actually came in to, to read for the role of Stanley, um, but I had seen... <laughs> And, 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 and I was actually, and I was actually. You guys probably are constantly getting cast in each other. Yeah. I don't know. It's, yeah. The resemblance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and I, I, I was a much, much better Stanley. But anyway, I was. <laughs> um, I, okay. I, I, I had, I had seen the British version, and I, I knew what the American version was, and I had read, and I went in to see Allison Jones again, who, who was uh, fantastic, and, and Phyllis, and um, I. They gave me Stanley, and I knew that if I was going to get cast in the show, that it was going to be as the Kevin character. So I, um, I went in and read the role of Stanley like Ke Ke m how I saw Kevin, mm -hmm. um, and was lucky enough that, that they saw something in that too. Right. So it they so let me come back. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Phyllis, uh, who was well, go ahead. You. Well, I was the casting associate on the show. Oh wow! Yeah. I did not know oh, that. Boy. They didn't tell you? Of all this. No, 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 they don't tell Rain me. Rain was actually the first person to audition, I believe, for producers. And you said no. <laughs> 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 I 
actually was being auditioned for the show and didn't know it. I was being was a casting associate, and I actually was reading with John and some other guy that was auditioning for Dwight, uh, who didn't make it. And <laughs> <laughs> and I had no idea, but I believe I don't know where where did it, where did well, I you had Germany read with me in the early um, yeah, screen with test. You. you read the character of Dwight in I did. in scenes with John. And, um, I did such a great job. Oh, that's why you didn't want him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll do this. I was going for Dwight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, you would have I mean, made an excellent Dwight. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the, um, as soon as we realized that that was even a possibility, everybody was very excited by it. But I think Ken Quapis was the one that actually, that he actually brought up the idea first. Yeah. Randall Einhorn is the director of photography on the show. <laughs> now, this show is about kind of the mundane nature of, of office life. I mean, there, it's obviously has its hills and valleys comedically, but, but at its root, it's about, you know, the mundane nature. Is it hard to make a mundane themed show pretty? I, I enjoy observing people, and I think it's a very just kind of sit back and pick it off uh, type of thing, and looking for the beauty in such a main, mundane place. That being said, we don't really strive to make the office look beautiful because I think it should be about that place, which is a little oppressive and mundane. But there is some beauty that happens there, and that's between the people. Oscar, hi. hi <laughs> you have the uh, odd distinction of being the one openly gay character in the show, which, by the way, did not come from anything real that may or may ha not have happened. <laughs> All right. Totally fabricated by Mr. Daniels. I don't know. <laughs> You gotta, you know, that whole protest too much thing, you gotta be careful with that. Um, <laughs> Touche. <laughs> now, does that, does that overlap into real life ever? I mean, do you find yourself, you that know... Fellas come up and kiss me and then they ask. <laughs> <laughs> they kiss me right in the mouth and are you, I'm like, I'm not gay, I just play a, a, a thank you. <laughs> um, no, it doesn't. People get it. They know we're yeah, yeah. characters and, and uh, yeah, it's... Now, uh, at what point in the run of the show did you the know? The third. Huh? The third? The, the, <laughs> no, did you, did you find out that, in fact, your character was gay? And had you been playing him gay all along? <laughs> <laughs> I was just playing him regular, and I felt I was a little bit nervous about it. And uh, John Krasinski came up and he said, Orale ese, you're a little piece of candy, and we're a piñata. <laughs> I, was just, I was just playing him regular, and then there was a rumor. People were uh -huh. like, they're going to make the character gay. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. I think the writers think I'm gay. I think they do. Jen? No. I swear to God. There was a rumor. They're like, they're going to make him gay. And then the script, the physical script, was there the, where I became gay. And then Greg Daniels comes up to me and goes, Oscar. Hey, come he's, here. Yeah, he takes his hand. And like, we lean on the desk, and he's like, do you mind if we make your character gay? Like, you wrote the script already. <laughs> the script, the script. Well, you think he's gonna not write it and ask you first? <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't care. I'm like, yeah, it's great. And I, it was funny because he was, I don't know if you remember, but he was very anxious about the script. He kept asking me, is it a good script? And I'm like, it's not a good script. It's a great script. It's a great script. And uh, yeah, and that's it. And then they made him gay. And, uh, and then I had to like, like not be gay because I was, you're right, I was playing him already as a person, so I'm like, it's just the same person. Kate, tell me about how your character Meredith, like how, I mean, it obviously started out smaller and then it, you found out more and more about Meredith and, and tell me about your, disco like discovering her, what that was uh, like well, for you. Well, it's, it's funny, I found out I was gonna flash Michael and be topless um, the day, basically like two days before it happened. So I didn't have time to like get in shape or anything. <laughs> uh, just, uh, I want to look good, but uh, you know, um, you know, is I, there really a getting in shape that you can do for your breasts? <laughs> well, it's more like getting your back in shape. You oh, know? all right. I sort of felt like fat back. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, that was kind of a, a major shock to the system. But you know, it's like you know, by the third, I've been now topless three times, and now like the last time was with like with Harold Ramis. Oh, thank, oh, why, thank you so much. What? Um, <laughs> Ramos was directing it, and I was really close to him because it was during a talk, talking head. And by that time, I'm like, uh, no, we got to get the side of the boob, otherwise the joke is lost. Can we just 
you know, I'm like, suddenly I'm an expert in how to be topless. It's so ridiculous. But wh what I thought was interesting is like, last season, um, <laughs> sort of. Um, last season, I, um, I got very um, accident prone. And um, you know, when I heard I was getting hit by a car, I was actually nervous that I was like, I actually asked if I was gonna make it, because I didn't know. <laughs> Um, and, you know, I, I don't know. I think getting hit by a car was kind of the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Creed, do you always understand what your character is doing? Because there's times when you do stuff and I have no idea what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to set this straight. First of all, I'm actually in my late 40s. <laughs> this makeup is like, I'm like the Estelle Getty of these people here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when, I'm, when, this, when this show finally runs, it's, I will be like 50 years old. Right, right. Be able to go on from Outlive them all. And I am British. Uh huh. <laughs> and I had to work very hard to lose the accent. Sure. So, uh, but no, Creed doesn't have a clue. What's yeah, going yeah. On. I don't have a clue. What's going on. Like uh, a couple episodes ago, he left the blood van, uh, obviously shoving a bag of blood into his pocket. Yes. What was he going to do with that? Put him. Okay. Was it his blood? <laughs> uh, it was everybody's blood, you know. Actually, I, Randall, I it came. Was Randall's I, idea. Well, I came under Randall. I said, hey, "Creed's got to steal something." And he said, "I got it covered. You're going to steal a bag of blood." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and he, I said, "Great, <laughs> great. That, that's how it gets boom." Uh, Leslie or Les or Leslie. what do you prefer, Leslie? Mm -hmm. um, as as a <laughs> the, kind of the complaint. Well, no, as the the complainer. Of, no. Well, Stanley doesn't complain. He's yeah. just thoroughly, professionally. <laughs> <laughs> but Stanley's always there, front and center, with the with the question about, you know, Stanley is the bottom line the of what the of worst reason, possible scenario. He's a conscience. He's a sharpshooter. He's just right there, serving his time in the trenches until he can be liberated by retirement. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that blows the question. I, so I, I, because I was, I was just going to say, like, do you ever sort of get worried that, uh, you know, that the writing staff views you as someone who's just too good at complaining? No, they've all worked in corporate America. They know what it's like. So there's lots of surly yet to come. Ha have you worked in corporate America? Oh God, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so is this drawing on a lot of? Drawing on a lot of insanity, mm -hmm. you get to bring all of that pathology and actually act it out and get a paycheck for it. Yeah, yeah. Wonderfully cathartic. I, <laughs> if the show were to come out today, w would it have the, the possibility of staying on the air? Well, you know what, uh, I give, I, frankly, I, and Greg was talking about casting and assembling all of these people, I give him so much credit for, for <laughs> I, I do. I, I mean, I think it all starts with him, and I, I think it, it speaks to the success of the show that, that five years in, we all really like each other a lot. And not just cast, but crew, everybody gets along incredibly well. And that started with Greg. Greg knew to choose not only, are you embarrassed? <laughs> but, uh, please don't. Well, Greg, I don't, I don't Greg used to choose people um, not only you know based on how he thought they would be on the show, but I think also the dynamic that they would work together personally. And and I, it's it's uh, boy, it's such an overused and cliche kind of thing to say, but it does feel like a a family, and we do look forward to seeing each other every day. So I think I think that comes through as well, and I think that helps in the work. That helps with the writing because the writers and the actors are all friends as well, and we. We understand each other uh, to a certain extent. Where is the show going? I mean, what 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 can we look forward to? Syndication. <laughs> That's right. Hundred episodes, right? I believe we'll see Holly again in the season finale. Uh, <laughs> Michael, we got Holly. Uh, variety of standard television obstacles. <laughs> <laughs> People get what they want sometimes and not other times. Yeah. Not. Wow. <laughs> Way to sell it, dude. Um, I, we, I know, I know. It's, anyway. it's, a, it's, a, it's a lousy Damn. question, like where do you see it going? It's a, no, I it's mean, a BS uh, question from a BS moderator. Right <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, no, stop it. Stop it. No, stop we, it, have stop a, it. we have a fun yeah. time. Oh, no. uh, but uh, actually, that is... We have hit our allotted time. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming out.
Uh, and I'd like to thank you all for being here and uh, for having me do this. And uh, keep making such a wonderful, wonderful show. There, there aren't enough of them on the air, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic place to stop and rest. <laughs> 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 thank you very much. <laughs>